One of the things I like most about YouTube is I get the chance to help people save time and money. And one area that people have commented on and told me that they wasted a lot of time and money are these aluminum brazing rods. Apparently some of them work really well, but a lot of them do not. So today we're gonna to be testing several different brands and we're gonna find out once and for all which products you should buy and which ones you should avoid. In the first test, we'll compare the melting point of each of the brands. Then we'll do some welding and compare tensile strength. We'll see if the weld peels away from the test material when placed under load. Finally, we'll slice through a cylinder head and make a repair to see if it can survive the heat and combustion pressures of an engine. At a price of only $9.99 for 60 welding rods or 17 cents each is this Icy brand. Easy to use, just simply clean the base metal and heat the base metal, not the alumaloy rod, until the temperature of 716 to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. Then rely on the parent metal heat transfer welding wire to form welds and wait for it to naturally cool off after welding. Made in China. These welding rods are very close to 2 millimeters in thickness. The welding rod only weighs 1.49 grams. In the first test, let's see if the welding rods actually melt at their advertised temperature. Okay, the temperature of the aluminum is around 760 degrees Fahrenheit, so each one of these welding rods should easily easily melt on the surface of this aluminum. The melting point for aluminum is around 1,221 degrees Fahrenheit and the welding rods are supposed to melt around 730 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of the comments from viewers mention problems with some of the brands requiring excessive heat, making it very challenging to heat the workpiece enough to form a weld. So let's first make sure the welding rods melt at the advertised temperature. Okay, after a minute, we did not make any progress melting this welding rod. So this welding rod definitely has a higher melting point than advertised. At $23.65, for a pound of welding rods or a dollar and eight cents per welding rod is this Blue Demon brand. Blue Demon is made in USA. According to the information sheet, stronger than aluminum, harder than mild steel, excellent corrosion resistance. No flux required. Well, zinc based metals, brazed aluminum. The Blue Demon rods weigh 21.56 grams. The Blue Demon rods are not perfectly round. At the widest part, it's 1 8 of an inch. At its most narrow part, 13 1 28. The Blue Demon is around 736 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see how it performs. Okay, it only took about 10 seconds to melt the Blue Demon at 730 degrees Fahrenheit. At $2.08 per brazing rod, or $4.16 for this pack of two, is this Burnzomatic brand. It claims to have a tensile strength of 33,000 psi. Working temperature 720 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to test that. Made in USA, 1 8 of an inch. 13 1 28 11.65 grams. Burnzomatic did a good job at about 10 seconds. At a price of $16.99 cents for eight welding rods or two dollars and twelve cents is this aluma weld brand these welding rods are sold at harbor freight stronger than aluminum harder than mild steel low working temperature no flux or fumes excellent corrosion resistance low cost the rock will be hardness is 55 to 60. the ultimate tensile strength is up to 40,000 psi working temperature 730 degrees fahrenheit harbor freight one eighth of an inch 22.94 grams took a little bit longer to melt than the burns at $21.95 for 10 welding rods or $2.20 each is this simple brand. The surface to be welded should be metallurgical clean. Aluminum forms an oxidation layer on its surface, thus protecting the lower layers from oxidation. Brush it with a stainless steel brush or sand with sandpaper until shiny. Use a heat source to heat the base metal. According to the instructions, you can use an LP gas torch, but map gas is a better choice. In case you're wondering, you can always use oxyacetylene as well. When the temperatures reach 728 degrees Fahrenheit, you can begin working. The simple brand is 1 8 inch. The most narrow part, 13 1 28 12.34 grams. The simple brand melted in 10 seconds, just like the Blue Demon and the burns matic at $22.95 or $2.30 per welding rod, the third most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Master Weld. Made in USA. 17 1 28 of an inch. 22.19 grams. The Master Weld is melting at approximately 740 degrees Fahrenheit. The second most expensive brand we'll be testing costs right at $25.99 for 10 welding rods or $2.60 each and is made by Saker. The Saker brand does come with a pretty good set of instructions on how to properly use their brand. The Saker brand is made in USA. The melting temperature is 385 to 410 degrees Celsius, 3.5 grams, 1 16th of an inch. Unlike the other brands, the Saker has a flux core and it definitely took more heat to melt than all the other brands except for Icy. And the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Hobart at a price of $18.90 for just 7 rods or $2.70 each. Made in USA. Heat base metal to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not heat rod. Allow base metal temperature to melt the aluminum rod. Hobart welding rod is 1 8 of an inch. 13 1 28 19.85 grams. The Hobart is melting at the advertised melting point. 
For the next test, I'll be plug welding some 5 16 inch washers to some quarter inch hex nut aluminum bolts in order to measure the tensile strength of each product. I'm going to first sand down the head of each bolt using a drill press and a belt sander to remove any oxidation and to create a uniform abraded surface. I'll clean each of the test pieces with some non-chlorinated brake parts cleaner, definitely non-chlorinated. The extra washers will serve as spacers. We don't want the weld to stick to the washers, only the bolt. So I'll be using some metal washers. Propane will work fine, but I'll be using some map gas which will heat up the metal much faster. To keep from melting or weakening the shaft of the aluminum bolt, I'll be pouring heat into the top of the metal washer and the head of the bolt. I'll be using a Blue Demon welding rod to improperly use this welding rod. What I'm going to do is actually heat up the welding rod itself instead of the metal and we'll see how much strength we get. I'm leaving a lot of weld overlap on this plug weld to serve as a fastener since the low temperature welding rods won't stick to the ferrous metal. Okay, I only heated up the welding rod and not the metal itself, and unfortunately, it didn't hold. No surprise, it's definitely not the problem with the welding rod, it was the technique I used. Let's go ahead and test IC first. There's no doubt that the bolt is at least 800 degrees Fahrenheit and the IC brand just won't melt. After a couple minutes of adding heat, the head of the bolt has definitely reached at least 1,131 degrees, the melting point for aluminum. Okay, the welding rod finally melted, but the head of the bolt is also melting. To avoid destroying the bolt from excessive heat, I'm just going to melt enough welding rod to overlap the top of the washer. As you can see, the head of the bolt did melt. So the temperature had to go above 1,131 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way higher than the advertised melting point. Let's see if Blue Demon can do any better. Absolutely no problem heating up the metal enough to melt the Blue Demon welding rod and to form a good bond. burns seems to flow very easily and doesn't seem as viscous as the Blue Demon. The overlap at the top of the washer isn't as thick as the Blue Demon either. burns definitely seems a little bit easier to use. Just like burns the Harbor Freight Aluma Weld is very easy to use. I was able to form a much thicker overlap weld on top of the washer with the Aluma Weld. I didn't have any challenges with the simple brand melting and flowing. It provided plenty of overlap weld on top of the washer. Master Weld seems somewhat like burns -matic. It flows very easily and left a very thin layer of overlap on top of the washer. The Seiko welding rods have a flex core and they definitely don't melt as easily as most of the other brands. By the time they began to melt, the test piece had cooled off just too much. Definitely not a pretty weld, but there's plenty of thickness to the overlap weld on the washer. Hobart and burns definitely seem to melt and flow very easily. Hobart left a nice thick overlap layer on top of the washer. In the next test, we'll be pulling this bolt off of this washer. We're gonna see how much force it takes, and this will tell us how much strength we're getting from our weld. So we've got clearance for the head of the bolt, and what we'll do is pull up until this separates. Well, let's go ahead and test the tensile strength next, beginning with the IC brand. So 554 pounds is the number to beat. I had a lot of problems getting the metal hot enough for the IC to melt, and unfortunately, it weakened the bolt to the point where the bolt failed and not the weld. Blue Demon moves into the lead over IC with 730 pounds of tensile strength. Pretty impressive when you consider the weld area is just 5 16 of an inch or just under 8 millimeters. Amazing job by the burns matic putting up 1,109 pounds of tensile strength. The burns matic did not become detached from the bolt head, but instead tore away from itself. This is the type of failure I was hoping to see. The Harbor Freight Aluma Weld did very well at 1,011 pound performance, but that won't be enough to take away the lead from burns matic This is exactly the type of failure I was hoping to see. The Aluma Weld did not become detached from the bolt, but instead tore away from itself. And Simple moves into the lead over burns matic with a 1,177 pound tensile strength performance. The bolt broke and not the weld. So the weld is obviously capable of even more tensile strength than the numbers indicate. Wow, only 88 pounds with the master weld. Unfortunately, the master weld just didn't stick to the aluminum bolt very well. So let's try this again with a new sample. 348 pounds is a lot better than the first sample, but still nowhere close to the competition. In both instances, the weld failed at a relatively low weight compared to competition. 186 pounds with Saker just isn't very good. The biggest challenge I had with Saker was getting the metal hot enough in order to melt the rod. Because of that, I overheated the bolt, the bolt failed, and not the weld. Let's try Saker again. 316 pounds on the second sample is better than the first, but still not as good as a competition. Hobart did an amazing job at 1,237 pounds, taking the lead from Simple. Just like the Simple brand, the bolt broke and not the weld. Using price per welding rod probably isn't a very good way to compare value since there's a huge difference in weight and length of the welding rods that we'll be testing. If we factor in the weight of the welding rods, looking at price per gram, Blue Demon is the least expensive brand, then Aluma Weld, Master Weld, Icy, and Hobart respectively. Both Hobart and Simple were stronger than the bolts, with the bolts breaking at 1,237 and 1,177. 
7 pounds respectively. Burns-O-Matic came in third at 1,109 and Harbor Freight's Alimma Weld fourth at 1,011. I have to admit, these low temperature welding rods are a lot stronger than I'd anticipated. Since IC has a very high melting point, we'll leave it out of the test this time and begin with Blue Demon. We'll first butt weld two pieces of aluminum together. The test pieces were first sanded and cleaned with non-chlorinated brake parts cleaner. The thickness of the weld has a huge impact on strength. So the objective of this test isn't to measure the strength of the weld, but rather to see if it peels or if it breaks. I made quite a bit of an overlap weld on each side of the test pieces. All the welding rods melted at the appropriate temperature, but Saker definitely took longer than the other brands. Purpose of this next test is to see if the weld peels away from the aluminum or if the weld breaks. I'll use vice grips to hold the test piece in position. The Blue Demon weld broke instead of peeling away, which is exactly what we want. The burns matic weld broke instead of peeling, so great job by the burns matic brand. Just like burns matic Aluma Weld did a great job with the weld breaking instead of peeling. The simple weld wasn't as thick as some of the other brands, so it didn't take as much weight before failing. The weld did a great job sticking to the aluminum. Master Weld also performed well in this test with the weld breaking instead of peeling. Unfortunately, I just did not have very good results with Saker. Some of this was probably my fault. The weld just did not stick to the test piece. I laid down an extremely thin weld with Hobart and it held up just fine. As you can see, the weld broke and did not peel away from the test piece. Up next, let's change the test a little by using a single V-weld. Blue Demon did an amazing job with the aluminum bending at 127 pounds and the weld held up. Along the main part of the weld though, there is some cracking that's begun. Very impressive job by burns o -Matic forming a very good weld and proving to be stronger than the aluminum. Very impressive job by Lima Weld with the aluminum bending instead of breaking. There is a crack in the weld, but it still held up. Simple didn't do nearly as well at 24 pounds. Unfortunately, I just didn't have very good results with Simple. Again, some of this is probably my fault for the application technique used. The weld did not stick to the test piece as well as some of the other products did. At 20 pounds, Master Weld just didn't do nearly as well as some of the other brands. Reaching melting point with Saker is pretty tough, and filling in this large V weld is going to be very difficult with Saker, so I'm going to go ahead and skip it. Very impressive job by Hobart. The weld held up very well in the aluminum bent. This is a cylinder head for a six horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine, and as you can see, I've cut all the way through the cylinder head. So up next, we're going to test to see if the best product we've tested, at least the best in my opinion, Hobart, is strong enough to take the heat and the pressure of the Briggs & Stratton engine. The best way to make this repair is to weld it on the inside, which gives the product a lot better chance to survive. But instead, I want to really see just how well this product can stick, so I'm just going to weld the outside of the cylinder head. It took around 7 minutes to heat up the cylinder head to around 740 degrees Fahrenheit. The Hobart welding rod did a terrific job patching this hole. Let's take a look on the inside. The low temperature welding rod did not flow into this crack. So it's going to be very interesting to see how long this cylinder head can hold up. Very interesting, according to the thermal imaging camera, the repair area is a lot cooler than the surrounding cylinder head material. I'm impressed, we ran this thing for 30 minutes and it held up just fine. Wow, check out the cylinder head, it held up incredibly well and did not fail. I have to say, I'm really impressed with these welding rods. It's hard to believe that that cylinder head held up for 30 minutes with such a thin repair area. Very impressive job by the Hobart brand. In my opinion, Hobart is the best brand, but Blue Demon, burns matic and Luma Weld also did very well in this showdown. All the videos on this channel are viewer suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching it. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.